Okay, let's take a look at the Dow 30. And what we're going to look at first is just a uh, regular chart. Here's a one-day chart. And Dow 30, uh, much like the Qs, but a little bit different that it broke out, was coming out of a broadening bottom. And it's a little more evident, I think, on a 60-minute um, chart. Let me see if I can zoom out here a little bit. Here you see that broadening bottom. Uh, volume is not really a factor in a broadening bottom. It tends to be um, kind of wild all over the place. I would have liked to see a pullback kind of hold there. Instead, it pulled back under it, and then it used that um, that point of support as resistance, so it's held under there. Maybe uh, there's some more um, downside, I think, over here. Let's take a look at 3C real quick, and I'm going to show you all the time frames in this one. And if we look at a one-day chart, you can see where this just huge leading divergence suggested that we were going to get this bounce and um, over here, and this is where I really started talking about I think the market is ready for a bounce. And this is where you know everybody on CNBC and everything was really negative and the market you know is just in horrible shape. And I actually said, I thought uh, not only we're going to get at the bounce, but people who expect the bounce expect it in the NASDAQ. I think the XLF is going to be the sleeper. That's going to be the one that produces the big move and the short squeeze. And I think it was one or two days later we actually got that move. But here is why I made that call. I didn't make it because I'm, you know, a swami or anything. I'm making it based on the charts and a uh, huge positive divergence there. On a 60-minute chart, let me back out a little bit here. You can see, again, positive divergence, those lower lows in this broadening bottom. It's making a higher low, as you can see. But if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see um, over here on the 23rd this week, uh, we did not make that higher high over here, it made a lower high, and this is what tells me that we're going to see um, the market roll over, and that's exactly what happened. Now we see a little bit of a positive divergence here on that one hour chart, and let's take a look at a 30 minute chart. Again, let me zoom in on it a little bit. Again, we see that same thing, that negative divergence over here. Oh, lost that time frame. We should be seeing um, the higher highs being made in this indicator, not the case. 15-minute chart, we're looking at the same thing. We should be seeing higher highs, not the case. So on all the time frames, I'm seeing uh, the negative divergence suggesting the rolling over of the Dow and the market in general. Um, and this is when I started saying that I thought the uh, Qs actually looked better on a relative basis and we're going to outperform on a relative basis. Over here is a positive divergence, and uh, this is where we see the downtrend uh, over the last couple of days anyway, downtrend on a 15-minute chart, starting to flatten out over here. We see a little positive divergence and possibly a little bounce or something coming here. 10-minute chart, see the same thing. We see the rolling over here, the negative divergence on the 23rd, and we see a positive divergence here looking like a bounce. Five-minute chart, um, same thing, negative divergence, positive divergence over here. And finally, a one-minute chart, let me see how far out I can get here on this one minute chart. Not too far. Okay, so anyway, on the one minute chart, we see um, our first rally attempt over here at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, fail over here, uh, negative divergence. We see another positive divergence at this retest and a very positive divergence here. So possibly uh, Monday morning we're going to see a move higher. My other two indicators here confirming that. So uh, Dow looking good for a possible bounce as early as Monday morning. Here's that VWAP we were talking about. Notice that 30 bar VWAP. Notice how the Dow hit it. This is the average price paid, uh, volume weighted average price over the last 30 bars. Notice uh, the Dow just hit that as resistance and retreated right at that VWAP. Interesting, pulled up on support right here at the 20 and the 10 day moving averages. And last that heat map. There's the one day version of the heat map. Okay, I'm going to show you the 60 minute. And you see again another confirmation here. We see that rolling over, that second hill, the negative divergence. And looks like we're going to get a bounce over here. So I like what I see in a lot of respects here on the Dow. I think it looks more constructive. Uh, than the XLF does. Here's the XLF. And here's the Dow.
the QQQs. And here's the Qs. I want to show you uh, that broadening bottom. It's over here. Not only is it a broadening bottom, let me back out a little bit. It's also an inverse head and shoulders. Here's a shoulder, here's a head, here's a shoulder, and it's sitting just under that neckline, uh, ready to pounce. Uh, the problem is the NASDAQ really is losing momentum here. It needs to pick up some momentum, break through this 46 level. On a measured move, if it breaks through 46, you can make a run, I think, to about 48, uh, where we see some resistance up here and some gaps and some resistance over here. But I think it can make a move to 48. I'm not going to show you the heat map because there's no trend here and MACD is pretty much useless in a non-trending market, in my opinion. On 3C, there's a 60-minute version. This is where I'm saying it's very constructive. Even in this non-trending environment, it's making higher highs. Okay, that's the 60-minute. I want to show you the 30-minute. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, even though it's going sideways, pretty much doing nothing, we're making higher highs and higher highs. This is why I've been saying on a relative basis, I like what I'm seeing here. And finally, let me show you the one minute. And if we can zoom in a little bit here. We see uh, a little move towards the end of the day. And um, it looks like 3C was not following that. It looks like it just got slapped down towards the end of the day a little bit. But all in all, I do like what I'm seeing in the queues. And I'm holding um, 46 calls on the queues for August and I think that those are actually they're at a profit for me now but I think that they're gonna do better and I'm gonna hold them for uh, the time the time being um, if I show you let me show you the, real quick something um, this is my trend channel that I use and you can see um, this stochastics I like to use this This is a very long stochastics a 50 period the problem with it I like to use this breakout above the 20 or the 80 um, as my buy or sell signals. The problem with it, there's no momentum going here. This really needs to turn up and see some momentum. Maybe we're going to get that this week. Um, my stop uh, with the stop channel usually uh, goes down here. It's a trending uh, instrument, a trending tool. It works great on a trending stock in a trending environment, but we're just not there yet. But that's my concern for the queues is just a lack of momentum at this point. Uh, where the rest of the market has had some momentum. We're just not seeing it yet in the queues. Um, what I do want to show you, let's pull up my um, 3C indicator, right? Let me zoom in a little bit. I want to show you, okay, this is the queues. Just for comparison, let's look at the diamonds. You can see how it's not as constructive. Let's look at the queues one more time, and you can pause the chart and take a look okay let's take a look at the spiders there's the spiders you can see but not as constructive now the IWM which has been the stellar performer negative divergence not as constructive the XLF again stellar performer a constructive chart positive divergence um, holding up decent negative divergence over here but again, um, the cues just look better on this 60-minute uh, accumulation distribution indicator. So that's why I've been making a stink about the cues uh, the last couple days. Finally, we're going to take a look at USO. And here's USO. Now USO, I had um, we had some really good calls on USO. We got short. Um, in oil, this is in you know we, we picked up the airline stock AMR when oil broke down, and of course that just ran up huge for us because oil uh, broke down. Of course, the airline stocks really did well, and um, you know there was a ascending wedge over here, which typically they retrace their base. We're just about at the retracement of the base, and I said uh, a couple weeks ago, I said within the month. USO is going to be below 100. It's already below 100. It's already retraced its base two weeks ahead of target. And I think um, now it is looking like it's ready to do something on the upside. 